Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about what can you do with Python. I get this question quite a bit from people from everywhere, even though I talk about it so much, right? Uh, so in this video, we're going to get a little bit more specific about what you can do with Python, what your options are, whether you're in college right now or not, whether you're trying to find work as a freelancer, become an independent contractor, or find a full-time position working with Python, I have your answers in this video. So let's get started without any further ado. So Python, as I like to put it, as at the perfect intersection of the most paid, one of the most growing, and one of the easiest programming languages. So when I say most paid, I don't mean, oh, hands down, you're always paid the most. I mean like it ranks at the top, right? Compared to other famous programming languages like JavaScript, Python is right next to it especially in terms of how much the developers get paid on average or at the higher ends. The reason why I say it's easy, right? It's because this programming language is super, super simple. The syntax, very, very simple. It was actually made for kids to learn. Then it evolved into an actual programming language of its own. And now anywhere from little children to people in NASA actually use it. Now, getting more specific about what you could do with it, you could do data science with Python, okay? So people in, uh, you know, co even come like companies like NASA or companies where there's a lot of artificial intelligence stuff going on, even at Amazon, they could use Python. Also, Python you could use for web development and a lot of people actually use it for that. Believe it or not, YouTube is built off of Python. Instagram is built off of Python. Spotify is built off of Python. So there are a lot of big companies that are actually using Python, right, to actually grow their entire companies and make their websites, their back end, uh, you know, using Python. There are certain frameworks in Python that you can use if you want to get a little bit more technical and look at that beautiful sun just making it look really nice. You know, the frameworks are like Django. You have frameworks like Flask. And these are frameworks that allow you to do web development with Python. And then on the front end, you could use whatever you want. I don't want to get too technical because I don't want to confuse anybody, you know, depending on whatever your level is and you're watching this video, I just want to give you a general overview of what you can do with Python. Other fancy things that you can do that are exciting for me as well are like things like machine learning. When you're building these algorithms and you're trying to build these like bots that can actually figure out and learn things on their own. Like have you ever seen those videos? You have this bot and then he falls down and then he gets up and then he falls down again and he gets up and after he falls down like thousand times, he actually figures out how to walk. He basically teaches himself or a chess computer, right? Like artificial intelligence, a chess computer that becomes the best chess player in the world in 24 hours by just playing with itself over and over again and learning from that. That's again, AI. Uh, how about Mario? That's um, neuro something, neuros, I forget the actual word for it. But basically what they do is you have Mario and the computer goes through the game of Mario, he plays this level over and over again until he can be the best Mario player in the world, right? This is stuff that you can actually do with Python, okay? So this is the machine learning realm of it. And it doesn't have to be with physical things. You could do it with things like, you know, Amazon, how it recommends you things that you don't even think of. These are called recommendation systems. And Netflix has the same recommendation systems now as well, which suggests to you movies or suggests to you products that you didn't even know that you needed because it knows you so well. Well, guess what? On the back end, there's some heavy machine learning going on. So Python is great for that. How about when uh, on your phone, iPhone, you take a lot of photos and you go in your Google app it categorizes pictures based on people's names. So if your friend is Johnny, 
it'll like have a section called Johnny. You could click there and recognize all of them. Well, guess what it's doing? It's actually recognizing Johnny right by his face that's image recognition that is also something you could do with python uh you know you can do digit recognition how things are written uh, and uh you know handwritten stuff it's very complicated to for a computer to understand what that digit might be right with a high confidence interval you can do with python right if you learn machine learning you can actually overcome that problem and actually build something that can actually recognize digits or written things for example remember when we always had to go to the bank to deposit a check well a lot of you probably still do that but what's the cooler way of doing it now you take a picture and it's something also called edge detection right it detects the edges of the check that's your image detection and then it detects your handwriting that says how much the check is for, then it automatically gets deposited into your bank. So that's actually image recognition, right? And then digit, digit like character or handwriting recognition in there as well. So that's a lot of that machine learning segment, which I find very fascinating, um, but I, did, I never spent too much time into it, you know? You could even do, you could do all kinds of stuff. So that is one world you can go into with Python. My world, and what I teach is different. What I talk about is web development. So now you're more along the routes of, uh, you know, how you actually build these amazing websites, the databases behind them, uh, and how you can actually make these apps, and how you can actually make this for yourself, and how you can actually make this for other people as well. That's a side of Python that I actually like a lot, which is just like web development. Right? And in web development, you're not pigeonholed into anything specific. You can do web development and go into data science. You can do web development and go into machine learning. You could do web development and go into other fields like data analysis. So data analysis is uh, a whole another field, which is a lot about having data and analyzing it. Okay? So you basically have a lot of this, a lot of numbers, right? Maybe terabytes or petabytes of data, depending on what company you're working with, depending on who's your client. Uh, if you're doing stuff with like, I don't know, what's going on in space, you're gonna be dealing with probably petabytes worth of data. But regardless, what you're doing a lot of the times in data analysis, you have a lot of data and you have to make meaning out of it. And then what you wanna do is also give it some kind of visual representation because if you don't visualize the data it doesn't mean anything it's uh it's going to be very confusing you know like for example you're working with a company and you're trying to find out like are they making enough sales is their conversion rate high enough so what you'll do is you'll gather a lot of data points of people coming in to the website landing on the checkout page how many of the people that are landing on the checkout page versus how many are actually buying from the checkout page you know that's something that's a little bit simple and you could probably just tell somebody like hey your conversion rate is like 0.5 percent or two percent which is you know for a sales page a pretty good uh, conversion rate for those of you guys who uh, are interested in business now this is something simple you can tell somebody but now if you have really complicated data right something like I don't know that requires calculus or beyond multivariate calculus something even beyond that that you can't really understand from intuition so you need to create these graphs these charts right that look beautiful that make meaning this is the simplest way I can give you data analysis okay there's uh, the data analysis portion and if you actually specialize in data analysis, right, making meaning out of what's going from the data, you could actually just be a specialist in that, okay? Um, also, you could be a specialist in data visualization. So you could just be that person who goes, hey, look, you don't need to worry about how to make this data tell a story. You just give me the data and I'll do the, all the graphics part of it, right, and give this data a story. Uh, an analogy I can give you is something like you have a director who maybe comes up with the entire story and like what happens, but it's kind of all inside his head. You know, it makes sense, but it's maybe inside his head. And then you have somebody like a cinematographer who actually like brings this to life, right? Who actually shoots it, who puts, sets up the camera in a specific spot, all that. Or you have somebody who storyboards everything that's in that director's mind 
So it's actually visualized, right? It's actually out of his mind and visualized. So that's the difference between somebody who's a data ana uh, analyst versus somebody who like actually visualizes the data. You can also be both. So that's another field you can get into. You know, with Python, a lot of uh, people will tell you it's really heavy on uh, or quantitative, right? It's really heavy quantitatively, meaning there's a lot of things you can do with numbers, and that's certainly true. But you know, web development is not so quantitative, you know, that's what I like about web development. It's something I can see, I can touch, I can move around, and it, you could really pick it up a lot from just intuition because you and I, we go through websites every single day. We look at apps and use apps every single day. So you and I are actually experts in apps and websites. So now, if you actually pick up web development, it'll come a lot more naturally to you and it'll be like more intuitive. Again, another reason why I like web development so much, one, it's easy, it's intuitive, and developers get paid a lot of money. Even Python developers, Flask developers, or Django developers get paid in their average range of above $80,000 or $90,000 a year. You're getting paid good money as a web developer and something that's a little bit easier to pick up. That's how I personally was able to pick up computer programming and become a developer in a few short months. Now, I am a bit of an anomaly because I was working about 17 hours a day, right? So that's absolutely insane. Um, I had no life at the time. But because I was going into more of like the web development field, I was able to find work a lot easier and without needing, you know, like a PhD and having all this like needing all this experience if you go for web development you don't need a lot of like you don't need a degree you don't need like a PhD all the time you don't even need experience to get started and when I say get started I don't mean like as an intern you can actually get started getting paid uh, you know as long as you can start working with that first client and then your experience actually matters a lot more than your qualifications because it's not a very academic field. So that's my personal taste. That's personally what I like a lot. You know, if you're actually interested in learning about how you can create apps, if this is something you're interested in, right? You want to create web apps. You want to become a developer. Maybe you want to get a job uh, as a Python developer. If this is something that excites you, I have a course that I launch after every few months. I'm going to put the link somewhere here and you can actually type this link in or click it in the description okay and when you sign up for this vip waitlist you'll be the first one to find out when this course is open also i'll send you my bonuses for how i became a software developer in less than three months so you can steal my exact roadmap and that's all free by the way it's free to sign up and you get my resources for free and all the resources that I give you that I use to become a developer in less than three months, those resources are also free. So it's really a win-win here. And that's what my course is about, right? It's just about teaching you web development. If that's something that you're actually interested in learning, that's what I go through. I teach you how you can have your own portfolio, where you can actually find your first clients and how you can actually go about making your very own apps and that are online, okay? So then you can actually start to build a portfolio, you learn how to create apps, and then you can actually offer this as a service to other people. But if this is, some, so if this is something that, int that interests you, you know, go ahead, click that below. Uh, hopefully I covered kind of everything for you. One resource that's extra that I want to give you is, uh, you know, if you're into data science or machine learning or whatever, there's a channel by the name of Siraj Raval. You should check that out. It's a very cool channel. And if data science and machine learning is the route that you want to go down, go to that channel. Okay, check it out. You're going to love it. Other than that, if you like this video, hit that like button. Okay, it's hard to make this video. And my friend here has been walking forever backwards, okay? And his arms are super sore, okay? So the least you can do after watching this amazing video is just please hit that like button. That'd be great. Subscribe to this channel. We will constantly, every week, Monday 11 a.m., you'll be getting fresh new content every single week on this channel, okay? For free, obviously. It's going to be on YouTube. Other than that, 
sign up, okay, for my course that's coming up. So when it gets launched, you're the first one to know. And it's the most sexiest, most badass, amazing course available on the market. I know because I've been through Udacity, I've been through Coursera, I've been through every course you can imagine on Udemy, I've been through every course you can imagine on Team Treehouse, Codecademy. As a matter of fact, I have my own course on Codecademy that ranks higher than the Codecademy courses. So if you go on YouTube and type in Codecademy Python, that's gonna actually rank number one. So I've been through a lot of courses, I've built a lot of courses, this by far, you know, is uh, my best course called Create Apps with Python and Land Your First Client. I wanna see you inside here, sign up. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I love your faces off, and I'll see you in the next video.